Robert D. McMullen, MD, and I'm going to talk a little bit about psychiatrists working with psychologists and other therapists. I uh, have been in practice doing mainly psychopharmacology since uh, around uh, 1980, and uh, I've recently added TMS, transcranial magnetic stimulation, to my uh, repertoire. Uh, I went to Georgetown Medical School and trained at Columbia. It's really important that psychologists and other social worker therapists work uh, with each other. That um, Psychiatrists don't do so much psychotherapy anymore, partly because of the financial constraints. Uh, and I think that they should uh, do even less. I don't think there should be many psychiatrists that take up their time doing psychotherapy. If, if a psychiatrist sees a patient once a week, then 40 patients could take up their whole work week. This never seemed to me to be reasonable for somebody to go through four years of medical school and then an internship and then three years of psychiatric training to spend all of this time and money on training and then just see 40 patients doesn't make logical sense. Uh, I've got something like six or seven hundred patients, and uh, and seeing that many patients also really improves your skill set because you've seen a much wider range of of problems, and you have tried all sorts of different medications, and you've had all sorts of experiences of medications working and not working, and. Uh, you just cannot replace that. And likewise, uh, the social worker therapist and the psychologist therapist that I know are generally much better therapists than psychiatrists because that's all they do and they become really good at it. And uh, it's better to stick to one specialty and put all your time into that and become really expert at it. Uh, even 30 years ago, many of the social work therapists that I knew were extremely good, much better therapists than most of the psychiatrists I knew. And back then, uh, there was much more of a hierarchy of feeling that the PhD clinical psychologists were uh, naturally better therapists than uh, clinical social workers. That's changed a lot. Uh, after people finish their training in social work school, for example, they usually go on to get more advanced training and supervision and become better at what they do. And that's what they should do. Uh, and more often now, the, the psychologists and social workers are referring people to psychiatrists to be treated for depression and anxiety. I remember years ago, many patients I saw had been treated for you know, six years, eight years, twice a week therapy and uh, had really not improved much because they were pretty depressed. So finally, the therapist sends the patient to me, and I put him on some medication, and I get lucky, and the patient does really well in six weeks and, uh, and stays really well. They're like 100% of a good mood. And, uh, and I never say anything negative, make it, and I see the patient rarely just to touch base and 
but it was often that after a year or so, the patient on his or her own would become a little aggravated at the therapist and think, you know, I spent all this money twice a week for eight years, and, uh, and the depression was never treated, and uh, I should have gotten this medicine a long time ago. And they'd get angry and they'd leave the therapist. Uh, you don't see that as often now because therapists are more cognizant of the fact that if a depression does not respond to psychotherapy relatively soon, then they probably should have some medication. Or if the depression is really severe, then it's, it's hard for the therapy to work. You know, if the person's so depressed, they can't really do uh, the cognitive behavioral therapy or, or the other types of therapy that have been shown to work for depression, uh, then, then they should be seeing a psychiatrist as well and uh, getting some medicine for the condition. When I think about it, I have quite a few patients that are therapists, PhDs, or social workers who do very good therapy, and some of them are specialists in cognitive behavioral therapy, which is well proven to help depression, and yet they themselves have chronic depression and see me and are taking some antidepressant. Even with all their skills, their tendency to depression is doesn't completely, has not completely gone away uh, with cognitive behavioral therapy. That they need some antidepressant to keep them at 100%. Depression is often just an, Ill it's an illness, and it's uh, not a character flaw, and uh, it sometimes requires medication. Now sometimes uh, the same type of uh, depression, which may be chronic and genetic, and the person's really got this problem, will, will respond very well to some other therapy like cognitive behavioral therapy. But if it's not responding in a few months, I think you uh, shouldn't waste any more time. Even if people have just a mild depression, it really messes up your life. You know, that it, uh, it's hard for your spouse. It's not, you're not so much fun to be around. And uh, I tell college students all the time, to not stop their medicine. They say they've had a fair amount of depression in high school, I got them on some medicine, they're doing great. And then they go off to college, they say, whatever you do, do not stop the medicine. And, uh, and I go on at length about this. But sometimes they're doing so well that after many months, they're happy there, they've got lots of friends, they're doing really well, they're making good grades and they miss the medicine a few days and they still feel okay and then they stop the medicine. Then, eventually they start to go back into their depression. And it's a mess because now, even with a mild depression, most people's grades are gonna go way down. So somebody who was making A's and B's now has a semester where he or she made all C's or worse and their grade point average is permanently damaged. Uh, if somebody's going to experiment trying to come off of their antidepressants, they should do it in the beginning of the summer, something like that, but not take a risk, because even a small relapse can have a major effect on your schoolwork and also on your job and on your social relations. So, you work together with the psychologists? Uh, we work together yes. a little bit that we communicate back and forth a little bit, but and maybe we should more, but a problem is, uh, is time, you know, that uh, they're very busy, I'm very busy, and then finding time to uh, talk about things is, is hard. Uh, I do it more often if, if we've got a really problematical patient that is somehow stalled and getting better, then uh, I might want to talk to him or her 
or uh, recently I, I saw a fellow I've seen for years and he gets very suicidally depressed and he did very well with TMS. He was really improving a lot, uh, but he stopped after 15 treatments when usually it was 30 or 40 treatments. And now a year or so later, his, his depression has relapsed and he's about as bad as he's been before. And uh, he's on two or three medicines, three, but he's not on very high doses. And, and I would like to talk to his therapist, although right now he doesn't have a therapist, to help me convince him that he, he should take a big dose. He doesn't want to take more medicine. But uh, if you've got a life-threatening illness, whether it's cancer or depression, and you're on some medicines, you're not on big doses, and they're not causing you much side effects, then go up to a more adequate dose. You have, you have to push things up. And uh, a therapist can be very helpful in, that, in, in doing that. The patients sometimes have this attitude that I sell medicine or I've got some money in stocks, money in stocks and pharmaceutical companies or something, but why would I want to give people medicine just to cause them side effects and not help them? You know, the only reason I'm giving them medicine is I'm trying to get them out of depression and I want to use the right amount to get them out but not too much. I don't want to give them too many side effects. I want to find something that works with minimal side effects. And with the modern medicines we have now, we can do that most of the time. You know, back before the Prozac area, before, before all the new antidepressants and atypical antipsychotics, it was difficult because those tricyclics so frequently would cause a lot of side effects like dry mouth, decreased memory, weight gain. Uh, they were really hard to take. They, uh, first, people really felt medicated sometimes. But if they were a little lower, then they were too depressed. So they had the choice of, I remember one patient that it really affected her cognition. So she, instead of being on five pills, which really kept her in a normal mood, she'd be taking three pills because then she could think more clearly and, uh, and do her schoolwork even though she was a little depressed. Now, we, don't have, we don't have as much problem with those sorts of dilemmas nowadays. Anyway, that's uh, my observations on therapy and psychiatry and medication. Mm -hmm.